Let's all go to Cargonia, land of stolen things. Obey the quartermaster, unless he is a link. Cargo takes out the station, find more stuff to take. But the boss is never satisfied until the station breaks. I decided this time around that we could watch the intro together because it's such a great primer on the inner sphere and the state of the world, some of which I have actually uh, covered, of course, in Text Talks Battletech, but there's always a lot more lore out there, and I would encourage you to read, read, and read. Always study your own work. But this was done so beautifully. The first FTL, which is quite cool. That's the uh, Demos Project. You know all of Earth would be watching that shit. What do you mean? We can escape this shithole? Fuck yeah. Tau City? Let's go get that planet. We get moving. Go Earth. Good old Star League. Some problems. A little bit of uprising here and there. We use this shit out of that uh, news report. We redressed it a lot. Goodbye, kid. Civil War was, I think, the best one we did so far. I'm hoping we do more good ones. Anyways, text of the Black Pants Legion here. We're going to continue with our story. Scrambles the Mercenary. Scrambles the Murderator. Scrambles the Stabinator. Battletech's first murder hobo. Not really. There's been plenty of them. But yeah, anyways, thanks for tuning in. Here we go. Scrambles Slaughter Division. We're gonna wait till our mechs are fixed. There we go. Nice. So then we're gonna go to our contracts and make that sweet, sweet money. We're gonna go do that priority mission. It's gonna be a very big priority mission. We're not gonna go to Detroit. Detroit in space is just as dangerous as Detroit today. All right, here we go. Well, let's see. Hmm. Set aside money to... Actually, you know what? Yeah. Morale increased by one. Don't worry about it. We're going to get our... Uh, we're going to get these... Uh, this bank loan paid off. But yeah, it's it's what people don't realize in Battletech is uh, you have to burn full power out to a jump point, then lock onto that jump jump or the uh, jump ship, just fly out there, lock on, then he jumps, and then you have to burn all the way back. So it's uh, it's quite lengthy to invade. That's why warships are such a big deal, because warships can jump and then maneuver. Jump ships sit at those points and just recharge. So everybody brings their drop ships, the jump ship jumps, and then everyone jumps uh, away from the, uh, everyone burns away from the jump ship. So it's, it's kind of interesting. See how this all works out. Proceed. 
We're going to go to a privately owned happy ship. And uh, they used a jump point. That is not a proper jump point. They're called pirate points. They're, uh, yeah, not that great. Not exactly safe, but hidden from scrutiny. Can't afford to turn the job down, so let's go do it. Who gives a fuck? Let's get in there and make some money. That's all that matters. Good enough for me. Basically, there's this old dr er, dropship. Which isn't really your standard sort of dropship at all, because it's a... Uh, not one that's going to be able to land on planets at all. You're going to have to use a lighter one like the Leopard to get it down there. It's a very rare and kind of weird kind of dropship. And in lore, they say this is one of two ever made. And that's, I'm not sure if this thing is even canon. Um, I do know parts of this game, at least the Arano Restoration is canon, but I'm not sure if the Argo is. Um, and that's, I'm sure that's something they have to weigh and debate. But it's an interesting sort of uh, expeditionary uh, dropship where... It could burn and carry a few of these light dudes and do repair and refit for the big guys, which is kind of cool. And it's an old Star League era dropship, but not a dropship in the sense it goes to a planet. Anything that connects to a jump ship is a dropship in this setting. So, kind of interesting. However, I feel, I personally feel, if something like this was wrecked on a moon or what have you, and it was a prototype or whichever, a one-off, um... If it was ever discovered, Comstar would just come and get it. Or blow it up, like they did with the Tirpitz thing. Or, sorry, Trippets. I still trip over that. But, yeah. I think you'd uh, go to a jump point, and there would be a warship waiting there for you. And they would uh, issue some command and control to your ship. And it would turn off, because they still have all those command and control functions. And then they would go. absolutely take ownership of it. So I'm trying to look at I need to get at this generator. I'm going to have to smoke this dude. Hmm. Taking a look at this. So those are my two radio towers. Then i got to get through. That's where my, my guys are going to be pretty handy. So we're going to try to get in a position to grease all this really quick and then get going. Ready for orders. Affirmative. No one else is singing this. Wake up, you idiots. We've got company. But they're driving giant battle mechs. We can't fight against them. Any more objections? Good. Get out there and fight. She seems a little mean. It's not how you motivate people. See the way I do it? I make a big old Italian dinner for everybody. Or a nice roast. And then you sit them down and you're like, okay, look, we're gonna get in here, we're probably gonna die. But hey, you made heart attack mashed potatoes. And you guys, you guys can, you guys can have as many heart attack mashed potatoes as you want. We gotta get out there and kill people, but, you know, there's mashed potatoes. And I made them, I made them with love. And, and you can, you know, you can get with it. You can, you can be afraid, but you can also have as many mashed potatoes as you want. I, it's, you know, give or take. It's, it's not a perfect world, but there are mashed potatoes, um, and you can't have them. End of speech. Standing by. I, I think that's the way to motivate, personally. Um, Affirmative. I mean, you just let them know Fire. that afterwards we can tell stories about how cool we are, One but we, we gotta get in there. However, there are as many mashed potatoes as you like. Well, let's neutralize this guy here. I think most radio equipment re reacts rather poorly to missiles, just personally speaking. Um, 
I know it's future radio, but still. Also, I think future radio would probably be buried, maybe? You got nothing, a little better. I think you'd have, like, transmitter and this just giant buried thing and... Waiting on you, Commander. I don't know. Sometimes they overthink stuff for sci-fi. I mean, I'm the kind of guy that's like... Someone will show me the planetary uh -huh. doom death laser and then I look at it and I go... It's kind of boring. It's kind of a boring thing. That space radar. I know it's radar and not radio, but I, I think they would have some way of making that hardened. Then I'm gonna get some guy who says, well, actually, they're not all that different. They operate on the same principles. Boom. Oh, look at that. That's nice. One more for Little pieces rolling around. I like it. Alright, let's hit it. Handled. Enemy unit destroyed. Now this is a believable amount of defense. For a pirate base, it's gonna be garbage. Let's hit it. Alright, let's get up here and do a little bit of shooty stompy, show him who's boss. Give him a give him a punch or two. Gotta be careful. Out here in space. Well that was not good. That's a waste of ammo, but fuck it. Vehicle trash. Welcome to Crater Town. Oops. All right. All the people in that dome, probably not in good shape right now. Um. Oh. Oh God. Oh. Okay. Accidents happen. Good to go. Heading out. All right. Let's do it. Target confirmed. Come on. The AA guns are down. And again, their AA guns are probably not that great. Alright, let's get in there. This is a hell of a cool base, though. I just love that they've kind of built it around this thing. Probably out of parts from it, but still. A moon base? And again, I guess a moon base would probably be all hidden in the crater. I'm going to have him stack up there. Get ready to roll in sideways. On my way. Heading out. All right, Got let's it. do this. Ooh, whoops. Guess they weren't really built all that well. Sorry, pirate crews who may or may not be working in these pressure domes. My bad. Hope you got marines to secure this thing. You're gonna need some door kickers, some grenade throwers. They have a lot of Marines. Now, here's the one thing that I know some people Wait, are going to, uh, some people are going to take issue with, but 
Some people are gonna say, Tex, if this if this can't land on planets and it's it carries dropships, wouldn't it be a warship? And the answer is no, it doesn't have a compact or light KF drive. Uh, the Kearney Fushida drive, which is the FTL drive that drives everything. And those FTL drives are on warships and jump ships, but warships have compact FTL drives, Position which are firm. almost, well, they are a lost technology for 99.9% .9 of the inner sphere at this point. All the last of the warships disappeared in the Battle of uh, Hesperus during the Second Secession War. They were all gone, except for Comstar's reserve fleet, which no one knew they had, but they also, it was a little mothball flotilla. It didn't, it was a fleet in being that they could take out to smash stuff, if need be. But it was largely hidden, because if you build a fleet in secret, its numbers become readily apparent. As soon, oh god, that is a lot of them. Yeah, your, your numbers kind of become a, a problem when you have to crew all that shit. The more people who know about things, the uh, less likely it is it remains a secret. There's a saying that I'm fond of. Three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Locust, Commando, Jenner. Let's look at our numbers here. Yeah, let's take that PPC. Ah, oof. All I was able to do is peel a little bit off them. These guys are not in great shape, but still. They have more units to soak my fire than I have to soak it so we're, we're gonna we're gonna try to be as as aggressive in this area as possible now yeah let's let's light him up there you go please fall down I know you won't but I'm just praying I'm praying to the gods of rain Jesus I'm praying to the gods that blow up magazines Light him up with everything. Dr. Murano, the pirates have Alpha Squad pinned down in the Argo's main hallway. Bravo Squad, Bravo Squad is holding the door to engineering, but you better hurry up. You brought two squads. This is not ideal. There we go. Good shooting. Nah, this is not exactly an L ambush. But I'm trying to do my best here. He needs to die. And we need to focus fire on, well, everything else in the kill box. You put them in the kill box and then you bury them in the kill box. Alright, let's light him up. Nice. There you go. Enemy mech destroyed. And we'll just keep popping him. Oof. Yeah, Spider does not have much in terms of defenses, go. so you gotta keep moving, keep fighting. Move order received. And the terrain right here is not really in our favor. But. Yeah, he's too quick. Let's get that Scorpion down. Scromble hates Scorpion. Punch. Waiting for orders. Location confirmed. Let's blow that up. Nah, he's too quick. All right. Take the AC2s off this. They're not going to do much. Confirmed. Yes. Explosion. That. Dr. Murad, what's 
happening in there. Come in, Doctor. A little busy. The pirates are dead. But so are half of my engineers. It's an unholy mess in here. Bodies everywhere. Can you get the ship flying again? I need an update. Look, do you want me to talk or do you want me to fix the damn ship? You do your job, I'll do mine. Oof. There goes his big punch. Go us. Alright, this has gone on for long enough. Let's punch him. Yeah. Oh my god. Such a beautiful hit. Yeah, that last little laser for fuck you. Yes, Commander. Yeah. Rock'em sock'em robots time. Exactly. Just beat the brakes off Guard these guys. Eliminated. Ready for orders. Coordinates received. Overheat. We are running real hot. Locking on. He's quick. Just constantly getting evasion. We gotta get him. Commander? That's why you chase him with something even speedier. Well, hi there. Big Mac, but it's in terrible condition. Waiting for orders. Which is something to point out. I think you'd find a lot of that in the periphery. A lot of old piecemeal rattle trap stuff that is just completely falling apart. Commander? Affirmative. What's up, boss? Moving to position. Yeah, Shadowhawk and then a Garbo Mac, so we're gonna bleed some heat here. We're gonna get in first with a jump shed, jump, and then we're gonna lay off of that and be just under heat. There we go. Alright. I see you back there. And having a big mech that's in terrible condition is actually not a bad idea for a pirate, because as soon as they see the identification, they're going to go, oh my god, it's a whatever, rather than seeing what it really is. And you really shouldn't be all that afraid of a quick draw. But I mean, imagine if you had like an Orion, and everyone else is running around in cheap-ass tanks. Even if that thing is barely running and barely held together, they'll see that and go, Oh god, they have an Orion. Standing by. Yeah, that quick draw is not my problem. The Shadowhawk is. But let's see. Yeah, that's the one I can hit. Affirmative. There we go. Grim Sibyl. Ready for orders. Roger that. Let's hit it with everything. There we go. Oh, oh yes. Yes, that is what I like to see. Scrambles forward. Let's lay into him. Yeah, that PPC is, uh, it's a warm one. Oof. Just a little bit armor breach.
Death Our commander. evasion is stripped down. Location Let's confirmed. shoot into that beautiful rear armor arc. Waiting for orders. On the move. This person is very fucked. So am I if I can't get these things to stop overheating, but you know. Fuck it. Got the angle. Taking the shot. Inflicted some heavy damage. Let's melee this bitch. Here we go. Boom! You can go burn in hell. Ah, oh, yeah, you had to had to give it that little bit of laser at the end for reasons. gonna get in this thing. Roger. There we go. For the first time in two centuries, this beast is gonna fly. And then you just see a white flash on the horizon. That's like game over. Mission successful. That's some money. That Shadowhawk is mine. The quick draw, there wasn't enough of it to put in a bucket, but the Shadowhawk is mine. The Shadowhawk is so very nice. I'll build a Shadowhawk, I'll put it into function or into work, and we'll we'll make it functional. I mean As much as I like the little spider. Welcome to the periphery. We have Rusty Boys, Forgotten Tech, Fun Times, and Triple F Burger. The other people who uh, live and work on that moon just look up and they're like, what the fuck? back. This time with one less sleeve. War does that to people, you know? Sleeves. Sleeves do that. War. In exile. This is our client. Used to work for her. Has a very Telltale Games character look about her. Oh, thank you. None of that matters. Just glad to see you alive. Uh, you're my first employer, so, uh, back pay would be appreciated. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, so, new boss, new job. Where have you been hiding? That's the good question. Yeah. They've been hiding out in nowhere land. He could only afford half glasses. Really tragic. Really tragic. Typical frontier worlds. Okay, so you made it off. Let's talk about why. Oh, she wants her throne back. It's gonna cost you. Magistracy is bankrolling you, eh? <laughs> uh, oh well, we'll see how that plays off. Hey, you already sold it to me? Let's make some money. Money to burn, I like the sound of that. Our war is about to begin. Bought up all of our debt. Ah, yeah. We found most of a centurion. That mech you wanted is back online. 
Uh, awesome. Alright, so now we can go to the mech bay and fuck around. Indeed. Let's repair the Vindicator and uh, repair the Spider. So, Centurion has nothing in it. That doesn't stop me because I have a store and very good uh, credit now. <laughs> oh, Phoenix Hawk. What a weirdo. Uh, there's another part of the quick draw. Pricey, but there's not a whole quick draw for sale, so it's it's one of those things. Nothing really crazy for weapons I want to buy. Um, hmm. Let's see if we can make one of these bitches work with just what we have, alright? Let's get into that weapons bay. Let's get into under the hood of the Centurion. So. Looks like everything is, uh... See, if we put it at max armor, not a lot to play with after we make it all max armored enough, but fuck it. Uh, let's see. Medium laser. There we go. Nice, nice. And then let's see. Missile, autocannon, ballistics. There's an autocannon 10. We've got ammo for it. Um... Actually, let's let's do the tried and true method. Feet ammo. Famo, as they say. Now an AC ten is quite fine, but we're gonna need heat sinks to make this fucker work. Gonna knock my uh there we go. Let's take one more off the back there. Heat sink. We're going to put one in the head. Has pretty good heat efficiency because I'm a little worried with two medium lasers so even if I strip that out, looks like I'll have more than enough. So let's put in one more AC-10 ammo. Yeah. Not a great loadout for this thing but it'll do. And uh, we'll, we'll make it work. Here's another Shadow Hawk which is nice. We're going to hopefully refit these thing and or these things and Oh, SRM-10, no thank you. AC-5, I can... Let's see. Jump jet small. Jump jet small. I don't know why they put it all the way over there, but I think that's more of a... game idea than anything based on realism. So let's go ahead and put in... Because we got a lot of ballistic fuckery here. That is entirely, entirely possible for us to break the game with. Um... Let's see. Can I get another AC-2? No. Because having three AC-2s would be kind of fun just to daka daka daka, you know, at somebody. Um, let's see. Two AC-2s is not great. So if I could find another one in the store and just do three AC-2s and just spray rounds at people, that would absolutely work in my favor. I could also put a PPC on this and just make this a nasty ass mech, but as for right now, I'm gonna check the store and see what I can do. Cause the limitations of everything is is kind of this early game in a nutshell. A large laser could be fun. But again, I'm also trying to watch my price of things. Hmm. Let's buy an LRM fifteen. Yeah. And let's, uh, let's just see what we can do with it. I mean, LRM-15, boom. LRM-10, could I make it fit? Yes, I can. And then, ammo. I can be an asshole now. Until I get some SRMs, then I'll turn this thing into a double SRM-6 and, uh... Maybe, ooh, yeah, I got some ideas. I got some ideas. So, we're gonna just put some more LRM ammo in this. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think this thing could be pretty fun. We'll just, uh, we'll let that, we'll let that be for now. And we'll go, uh, find a job. It's gonna take some time. But, yeah. Aggressive negotiations. Alright, let's look at the mech bay and see how long everything is gonna be out. Because some of these are just getting repaired. 
shouldn't be that hard at all. Uh, let's go ahead and, yeah. Hmm. These two guys should be back in option or action really quick. And that'll allow us to, uh, make a little bit of scratch before moving on. Um. Yeah. Morale decreased by two. Mech base supplies. I don't care if morale's low. Our shit works. We got a we got bills. Alright, here we go. All we gotta do is fight some bandits. What's the worst that could happen? I got light and more salvage this time around. Yeah, this'll do for now. Alright, boys. Let's go to war. Commander, this isn't likely to be resolved by one dead diplomat. Why would he point that out? Well, I know why he'd point that out. He knows me. Or he knows Scrambles. Which is... Eh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> War. War never changes. Alright, boys. Here we go. Command interface initiated. Alright, let's do this. Eliminate the local government diplomat. Sure, no problem. Heading out. Roger that. I mean, it's just a job. Okay, looks like a locust out there. Let's see who else shows up to our little birthday party. This looks like an ideal place for an ambush. It could be an ambush. That's fine. We're gonna run like hell. Uh-huh, locust. That's a locust. That's unknown. We're gonna run back, but running at that speed, it's gonna be real hard for them to connect. So we're gonna slowly roll forward as they uh, expose themselves to my angry beams. Oh, here comes the locust. Oh, you shot a medium laser. Just the one. Good job. Send it to me. Oh, wow. They're really charging up. Whoa, you actually connected with that. Amazing. That got through my armor, Commander. Well, you're a locust. It's the back armor. I counter with what armor, you know? All right. Let's see. Eh, no. What about you? Not really much better. All right. 45 with that PPC. Yeah, let's try it. Oh my god, beautiful. Oh, and we got a player, another Vindicator. That's the Diplomat. That's very aggressive diplomacy there. Orders. So last time around, I talked a little bit about lore and things I like. Some people were a little salty at my opinions of some stuff like Warhammer 40k. And I think it's because they, they made a critical mistake, in my opinion. Again, my opinion, I... Read the lore. I don't write the lore. The so, do take this with a grain of salt. It's much easier to be a critic than it is to... I mean, it's easier to review a, a play or something like that, or a movie, than it is to make one. Um, oh, oh, what a good hit. Very nice. But, 
the thing that I found that was kind of the problem with a lot of a lot of lore is what I like to call the the George Lucas Better? issue, where you have something that's really mysterious yeah. and and wonderful and crazy, like the Force in Star Wars. This magical ability that if you spend your whole life in tune with it, you can accomplish all of these really crazy feats. You can heal yourself and, you know, seemingly age slowly or become very powerful, very strong, achieve these great feats and uh, run and jump and fight and shoot electricity. And in a strange way, it also mirrors or mimics the performance of the person or their alignment or their ethos or their feelings and emotions. And it's this mysterious prime mover of the universe that seemingly flows through it and gives it life, but you can take from it as well this weird sort of chi energy that is a very strange conduit of all things living. And um, that was a very interesting mystery. And you realize it's been studied for thousands of years by these force users, and it's not something everyone can learn. It's like magic in a way. It's very mystical. And um, then George Lucas came up and said, it's a uh, bacteria, and it's in your blood, and there's a number, and the higher the number, the better you are. And um, that kills it for me, you know. That's why one of my favorite um, edits of films is called The Phantom Edit. I really like that one, where it just removes the midichlorians thing, and a lot of other, a lot of other unnecessary stuff, which I, I, I find to be really great. Um, it, it almost trims Jar Jar out of the movie completely. He's just this weird background character that doesn't do much, which I, I think is appropriate. But the thing with 40K is there was a lot of stuff that was supposed or lost or bits of lost history, things that were suggested or not known or had passed into legend. They were They were just these stories that have been passed down so you really doubted in many ways what what really happened and what didn't happen and you you wondered a lot about it and then they started filling it in and that was kind of a problem is is when you have that lack of mystery in a universe that is moving around when there's bits and pieces of it that are always going to be what really happened or is this legend or is this true is this magic or is this some sort of innate ability All weapons are go. when that gets explained in black and white it kind of drains from it Critical hit. But then again i guess creative retconning is always kind of a problem in a universe how do you do it well um one of the best ways i ever saw retconning done was in battletech one of the really beautiful ways uh, Battletech was retconned, um, which I do wish they'd do with the Jihad, but, um, and I think they are kind of slowly retconning the Jihad, but that's that's just a matter of opinion. Um, one of the best things I saw retconned to Battletech was that awful Battletech cartoon. They said, oh, well, that's in-universe propaganda. It's uh, it's from the Tharkat Broadcasting Company. It's just, okay, it's, it's a propaganda. It's like a TV show for kids. And I thought that was magnificent. I, th I think that's kind of the way you, you nod that. You go, no, this is just, uh, you know, this is propaganda. It's, uh, it's silly. Oh, no. Fuck. Lost a leg. God damn it. I took some shrapnel. All right, we gotta, we gotta keep moving and grooving here. I gotta shoot and reposition. 50, 50, 60, uh, that's a little better. Those guys out there, I'm not even going to be able to touch. But that locust there, yeah, you're getting the business. It seems to have hit and not hit at the same time. There was an enormous boom. Yeah, it hit. Nice. It hit him, which I like. Oh, goddamn. That's gonna suck. I could easily lose that spider. The thing is soft as shit and it's lost a leg, so... Ready for orders. Yeah, that's that's not a good... So we need to we need to reduce these numbers here a bit. Okay, that's not bad. That's even better with, well, the AC2. I mean... Hmm. 
Okay, let's hit that guy. Aye, aye. Come on. Aw. Oh, I was hoping something else would explode. Target's taking a critical hit. Receiving you. I copy. Alright. Eh. Oh, that's much better. Yeah. Copy that. Yes. Good shooting. If I can get this other locust down uh, in this next turn. Tango down. Yeah. This will this will be real good. Well done. Oh wow, where are they going? Oof. Call shot to the head. They are not being generous. They are not being generous at all. We're going to keep backing off. Because those guys way off to the right are going to lose. Going to line of sight. Right there. They're not going to be able to do a long distance shooting. Very easily at all. Because now they, they have the high ground. But... Oh, Vindicator has moved up. Oh, no. Oh, I, I think she did. Can I get a rip for glitch? Receiving you. That is that is not kind. All right, let's try to run this way. That was bad luck and my bad choices. Like most of my life. Huh. All right. And unlike Battlefleet Gothic, this person won't magically run off the edge of the board. All right, let's lay into him. Let's give him the business. Firing on target. I want that Vindicator. I should have brought heavier firepower for this mission, I know. See, they're going to have to come back out if they want to play. Yep. Nice try. Good to go. We're going to close in and clobber this guy. We're going to get our payday. And we're going to bury what remains of Glitch in space. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and he's closing. Oof. That's awesome. I, I love how the light plays off the water. If a game is at least pretty, I'll forgive a lot of it. We're, we're getting a little bit out of their range, so I, I want them to have to work for it. I don't know what kind of diplomat this is, but they can go fuck themselves. Eh, spider. Go away. We're busy. this guy down because we get another three coming in and I think we can take this guy those two spiders that are gonna be fast movers it's gonna be a little harder than it seems even though I way outweigh these guys it's gonna be a little harder than it seems oh yeah please fall down please 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 I know he's unsteady oh man he's making jumps He's getting in on this. Orders. Position confirmed. I know it's overheat time. Engaging target. Yes. Head to the evac point. One left target. Where is the evac point? Oh, behind the guys I have to kill? Yes, Commander. Well, I might just kill them. Location confirmed. And do my best anyways. All right. These spiders are very fast, so that's got Failed me nervous. 
And the guy in the back, as we saw earlier, has some heavier weapons. That's kind of a problem. But if he wants to come in here and play Rock'em Sock'em Robots... Yeah, machine guns. Oof. Critical time. That could be a problem. These spiders could easily pin me down. Easily. But I have to fight. I have to stay maneuvering and I have to stay angry. I don't know. I think I could just punch him out. Oh my god, beautiful. Yeah, give him that little last little fuck you. Exactly. Enemy mech. Critical damage detected. Waiting for order. Yeah, let's do this the old Ender Sphere way. Royal Rumble time. Receiving you. Got it. It's a panther. All right, let's do this. Firing a full salvo. Oh, good shot. Think I hit something good. Fall down, go boom. You always be worried about machine guns. Always in battle tech. Anything that generates crits like machine guns do, just be wary. Because I, I have I have an ingrained fear of machine guns and light lasers. Just from having bad lucks by people who cluster a lot of those fucking things and just beat the shit out of you with them. Stomp. There we go. One down. Yeah, and give him one more for a good measure. Go. You know what? Yeah, we're gonna do this. Oh my god, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Give him, give him a little bit of stomp, you know? A little bit of stomp. Oh. Oh, the power. Now, who is the master? Probably him. He's he's got the high ground. Oh, he's going for it again. I love that angle. You know, that's a great camera angle. He's got the spotlight coming down on us. This is going to be an expensive mission, but uh, a good challenge, and I enjoy those. Yes, Commander. One or two more uh, good hits. That'll be nice. Alright, now that we are weapons free and no heat. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Please explode. Solid connection on that one. He's just gonna stand. Internal structure damage. And he's gonna shoot. Standing by. Aye aye. Yeah, well. Roger. Oh, that wasn't good. Oof. Disarmed. Scored a critical hit. Commander. Let's do it. Affirmative. Please explode. Oh, yeah. See, this is how you do it. This is how you get that, that side money. Tell the contract uh, holder, mission accomplished with extreme prejudice. Look at that. All right, I'll take that other Vindicator part. I think that's a pretty nice one. See any other nice things? No, just a lot of jump jet parts. I guess I'll take a panther part. I love how it gives you a value of your salvage, but in reality, it's dimes on the dollar. 
It's the periphery after all. And on that bombshell, see you next time. Stay safe out there. When we pulled into Cargo Bay and need a shotgun shells, the QM yelled at me to stop a banking on his belt. We wanted some munitions for our glorious valid hunt, but found too late that they just hated us, we tied the cunts. And we're banned from Cargo, everyone. Banned from Cargo just for having a little fun. We spent the whole round gearing up and stealing all their war. Now Wendy doesn't want us anymore. I started as a cargo tech and I had a Cindy's comps. So I did what anyone would do and ordered 20 bombs. Hey, but that? then an NG with the welder hit me and set me ablaze. So cargo set on fire too when the server lagged for days. And we're banned from cargo, everyone. Banned from cargo just, just for having a little fun. fun. We spent the whole round gearing up and stealing all their war. Now NT doesn't want us anymore. Worked the shift as King Cargo decided to succeed. The cargo texts were sent out to take all things we need. Foolishly, SEC challenged us and all of them did fall. The only thing that stopped us was that goddamn shuttle call. And we're banned from cargo, everyone. Banned from cargo just for having a little fun. We spent the whole round of gearing up and stealing all their war. Now NT doesn't want us anymore. Take it from here, Stagger. I heard those fucking techies were building an engine. They didn't heed my warnings, they constructed an SM. Just to let them know who really is the chief. I cut the power, locked the doors, and now they're all ground beef. And we're banned from cargo, everyone. Banned from cargo just for having a little fun. We spent the whole round gearing up and stealing all their war. Now NT doesn't want us anymore. Solo! Just for having a little fun We spent the whole round gearing up And stealing all their war Now NT doesn't want us anymore A pizza party reward enough for all the cargo techs Might as well still work for this Because of the nervous wrecks Any other suggestion just might be a side of scene just another fucking ship on Space Station 15. And we're banned from cargo, everyone. Banned from cargo just for having a little fun. We spent the whole round gearing up and stealing all their war. Now NT doesn't want us anymore. Because we're job banned. Oh, give me a locus where the gravitons focus, where the three body problem is solved. Where the microwaves play down at three degrees K, and the cold virus never evolved. Home, home on the grave. Where the space debris always collects We possess, so it seems Two of man's ancient dreams Solar power and zero G sense We eat algae pie Our 
vacuum is high. Our ball bearings are perfectly round. Our horizon is curved. Our warheads are burnt. And the kilogram weighs half a pound. Home, home on Lagrange. Where the space debris always collects. We possess, so it seems, through a man's ancient dreams, solar power and zero G sense. If we run out of space for our burgeoning race, no more lemons come left for damage. Start, we shall take Mars apart if we just find a big enough wrench. Home, home on the grave, where the space debris always collects. We possess, so it seems, to man's greatest dreams, solar power. I'm sick of this place It's McDonald's in space He is living out here is a bore We'll tell the shiggies don't cry They can kiss me goodbye Cause I'm moving next week to L4 Space debris always collects. We possess, so it seems, to a man's ancient dreams, solar power and zero G sense.